So we're here with uh, Matt Jaffe and Janae Bennett today. It's the first episode of Bang the Kitchen. Pretty excited. We got the cover artist over here in Incognito drawing Matt Jaffe today. We got Matt Jaffe, centerfold of the first issue. Purpose of this TV show is to bring this magazine to life. I was thinking like, what would be cooler than actually making a magazine? I thought bringing it to life in my kitchen. So I'm gonna ask a couple questions, my friends. See how this goes. <laughs> Cheers. Mushroom cups. So what was it like uh, touring the U.S. with Blues Traveler? You played like almost every major venue in a yeah. short amount of time. I mean, you know, I pretty much, I, it was sort of, I was trying to walk this line of like really soaking it up mm -hmm. because I know that I may never have that opportunity again. I right. hope that I do. I work every day so that I do. Right. But from day one of that tour, I knew, you know, this may be, I may not play the Fillmore again. I may right. not play Irving Plaza again. So I was like, God, savor this shit. Uh, but at the same time, you got to be like, well, if you're thinking about savoring something too much, you like lose sight of just being there, right? Right. So I don't know, you just approach it like a gig. You know, when you're, to me, it's like whether I'm playing a coffee shop, an open mic, right. a dive bar, or like a concert hall, you got to bring the same energy, the same, just like faith and joy. And for sure, it, it, you know, if you think that, you know, playing and playing the Stark open mic, if that is working for you, and then you have an opportunity to play the Fillmore. If you try to totally rework your approach for the Fillmore, that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's like the same thing, just bring it to a different place. See, I've always had the opinion that like, I mean, I've had a lot of like musicians I've played with be like, it doesn't matter, it's just an open mic or whatever. And it's like, I've always had the same opinion whether I'm playing for one person. Dude, yeah. Or if everyone hates me. I'm still like, you have to do it for yourself. And you have to put on yeah. the best possible show. It doesn't well, matter the crowd or anything. I mean, actually, I've played with a lot of metal bands in I the actually, East Bay, and they all hated me. They're all like, punk, so you don't know how to play guitar. What are you doing here? Yeah, I don't... <laughs> hate, is, hate is like a, a bigger compliment than indifference. <laughs> um, also, punk and metal are like very close cousins in terms of... I, a lot of people, uh, I don't know, that was the thing, is like, it was, you know, faster music, so I always got, like, tossed in with metal bands, but then people were just trying to, like, you know, kind of have pissing contests, like, on stage, and then they saw, you know, like, five chords get repeated, and they're, like, just walk out. I've had, like, whole audiences just walk out. But I still was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to play for you myself. Gotta, you got to do what you want. I mean, if you start trying to please someone, then it's like... Where does that end? You know? There's there's never, yeah. I've always found like in anything you do, you'll never please everybody. So it's like you have to do it for yourself and you have to, you know, yeah. be in your own zone. Totally. Like you said, you can't really like change a show for the film or that you play at Starry Plow Open Mic. It's got to be the same exact show. You got to yeah. be in your zone. I mean, I'm a huge believer. If you do what you, if you do the unique thing you think you can offer to the universe. Right. The people who are meant to like that you will find them, you know? Whereas if you're trying to please people, then eventually it's like... It runs out. You're, you're like, who do you please? Because everyone wants something different, and you eventually find this, like, amalgam of things that people like, which is just not you. you right. Know? It's, like, it's like, yeah, you can please, you know, you can sprinkle in dashes of things that please everyone, but that's where, like, contemporary pop is. It's like, you know... Rock people kind of like it, country, kind of, hip-hop. It's just this, like, big stew that isn't really, like, extreme for any particular group, you know? What would you uh, classify your music as if somebody was like, hey, um, what kind of music you play? You know, I don't know. It's gone through, it's gone through phases. I, I would say right now we're sort of like, uh... 
I like to use the word cow funk still, you know, it's like... Cow funk or punk? Punk. Okay. Yeah, cow funk. <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah, I mean, you did have horns, like, the last time I saw you. you. Like, what's up? Cow, you know, I don't know. It's like, I, I always come at shows from, like, like, the people who, like, just are true believers, like a Joe Strummer type. Like, those people are my heroes, but I'm so into, like, Roots Rock, like, Hank Williams, Johnny Cash. Right. Um, that, for me, having music that, you know, just sounds like American folk music, trying to bring that together with, like, punk urgency, that's where I want to be. Right. Um, yeah. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> So what would you say your, uh, like, for me, like, like main dreams and aspirations were just to tour Europe. Do you have any, like, really main dreams or, like, yeah. goals that you want to hit? Something that would make you feel more comfortable as a musician? Um, you know, I think it's, uh, in a way, the goal is to never feel satisfied, you know? It's like, I think, uh... For me, it always comes back to songwriting, and it's like, I, uh, there are all kinds of venues I want to play, and right. people I want to open for, places I want to go, but at the end of the day, it's like, I just want to write songs. If I, if my life was like, cooped up in a shack writing songs, <laughs> maybe... It wouldn't be that bad. It wouldn't be that bad, right. you know, it's like... I mean, obviously I'm exaggerating. But, right, yeah. But, like, to me, to me, I I play shows and I go on the road and stuff because I'm writing songs. Like, right. I probably wouldn't be singing if I wasn't writing. Whereas, like, if I wasn't singing, I'd probably still be writing. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I want to continue to expand who we reach, where we go. You know, pretty much your typical dreams of a musician. You know, we, you know, we want to go go all over and play to people. Right. But, you know, I, I don't think I. I think there was a time where, my, energy to keep doing it was really dependent on like reaching people. Mm -hmm. And now I think, I think in a way like reaching people, still a big dream, but almost icing on the cake. Like I'm so lucky that I get, that I have the time to write, that I have the incredible bandmates I have, that I'm in this great Bay Area music community that I'm able to support and they're able to support me. I'm so fortunate for all of that that in some ways anything beyond is just like, it's like wow, you know, it's just good fortune, you know. If the status quo was maintained, I would be a very lucky dude, seriously. I definitely believe that. So, do you have anybody in your family that plays music? Uh, my sister started on violin when she was five years old. She's three years older than me, so when I was five, I was like, I want to do what my sister does. So, I started violin, too. Uh, and she's sort of gone down a, a different path than music, but uh, we always sort of exchanged, you know, artists we were into, and yeah. At the age of what? Uh, at, at our age, what age were? When you were exchanging music. Oh, uh, when I was in high school and she was in college, that was really when she got me hip to like Neutral Milk Hotel, yeah. Severus, Arcade Fire, so a lot of great like indie rock from like the last 15, 20 years, you know. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I think she was a big influence. I, you know, in a big way... Uh, she's just been an influence in terms of like, I don't know if I said this four years ago, I feel like it's possible I did, but she, the way she approaches life is just so badass. She, uh, she knows what she wants and she doesn't let things get in the way. Um, she is such an incredible advocate for herself and she just, you know, finds logical step-by-step -step ways to achieve. And now she's doing something totally different than music, but uh, the way she achieves her, her dreams. Her what dreams. is she doing right she's now? She's uh, 
She's a, uh, a grad student at MIT. Okay. She uh, is an electrical engineer and a computer scientist. That's so, awesome. Uh, different world, but the way she does things is something that I aspire to. It's awesome to have like such supportive parents too yeah. for what you do. I mean, I know that it has to be like a huge part of who you are. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like traditionally rock and roll is sort of like where how kids like go do right their do shit. their own thing. Yeah, but no. To me, it wasn't like if I would never be in rock and roll if it wasn't for yeah. my dad. Totally. I like mean, my dad being supportive and me playing like three chords over and over again, and my dad's no. playing drums, being about to about to pass out yeah. and just be like just keep going I love you but I'm about to pass out my parents used to drive me to two or three open mics a week you know right and that's I super far a, like how how yeah. far is a drive from Marin to Starry Plow well, Starry Plow like at rush hour you know that like, could be an hour right uh, is that how far it is from Marin oh, it's, it depends you know it just depends on traffic it just keeps getting worse right. man but right. um I mean, the point is, whether it was 15 minutes or two hours, like, they took me, right? Mm -hmm. And for, like, five years, I played the same Monday night open mic every week. Very often the Starry Plow on Tuesdays, and usually a third in there somewhere. And, I mean, I wouldn't be doing it today if it wasn't for that. Right. You know, the people I've met at, from open mics. For sure. You know, it's like yeah. that. That's still my that's, network. I know. That's. I. Like, I feel like anyone who's like really successful and and like has music as their passion. Yeah. Like doesn't care about any of this bullshit that people like try to yeah. perceive as like what I need to do as a musician. They just go out and they perform as much as humanly exactly. possible exactly. until they get what they yeah, want. I still, you know, I still go to the Starry Plow when I can. You know, it's like, and that's. I mean, people think like, well, you know, this is like square one for growing out of this like I'm, right yeah that's what people like, no, yeah not, i've had it's like if, yeah maybe you're playing gigs and that's awesome if you do it's not for the record i think it's great to have ambition you know it's great to say i want to do this this is the big goal that's right. great but if that gets in the way of enjoying you know where you start out what you know just like going down hanging with your friends playing tunes right. on a monday or tuesday night then it's like I bother with the big stuff. I know. It's, I, I feel like it's really crazy how a lot of musicians think that, like, I'm at this stature now, so I don't need this anymore, you know? But it's just yeah. like, all the really successful musicians I know, they do still play open mics, and they do it yeah. for the passion, for the and passion. that's why they're successful. Because people see that, and they want a piece oh. of that passion. Right. It's not like... Oh, I'm I'm like too good for open mics now, and that's what a lot of people get, and that's why they fail, in my opinion. Because it's like if you're only like if you think it's like a stature, like yeah, quo, sure. then like what are you even doing? Like it's all about having fun, and I don't know, just yeah. playing your it's your music. Fun. It's about it's about being there. Uh, you know, no one, no real musician is in some you know golden tower. It's about being there. Right. <laughs> And, and, you know, just going back to my parents for a second, like, you know, we were saying in, like, in rock and roll, it's like where kids go, you know, fuck shit up. Crazy, right? But, right. You know, for me, it's like my parents have been there for me for right. so long that to get, you know, to not want them to come to a show or something would just be ridiculous. It'd right. Be hypocritical. Be like, they've done so much to allow me to get to a where I am, and uh, I don't know, you know, people who come to my shows, uh, I'll see my parents are there singing along, and that's, to me, that's, I'm just flattered that they're willing to do that. So have you ever played violin on any punk albums? Uh, I don't know, this band, uh, what was it, Elegant, what was it, <laughs> Elegant Trash? Oh, okay. Something like that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I might have, I, I think where I played the violin, it's a building that looked a lot like this building. Is it like this one? Could have been this one. <laughs> um, yeah, violin, punk, I don't know, there's a great group called the Mekons, do you know them? I don't. Okay, you should. Did you play violin for them too? No, no, they're, they're like a, a band from decades ago in Britain. 
Cool. They uh, they have this record called Fear and Whiskey that's like the first punk album that had like acoustic instruments on it. Oh wow. Um, but it's really cool because it was. What what uh, year did that come out? Oh, uh, it's got to be like eighty six maybe. Okay. Eighty five, eighty six. It's it's pretty cool. It's like it's got drum machines, fiddles, but it's like definitely punk in spirit. Um, yeah, huh? You know, there's a place for it. I, you know, I think I've been sort of dancing around this like punk country thing, the cow punk thing, and I think what it comes down to is like both country and punk music are really concerned with like telling it like it is. Right. And no energy, fucking around. Yeah, their energies are really different. But, uh, you know, they're, they're forms of music that are intentionally pretty simple, but have lyrics that are, like, straight from the heart. And I think a lot of bands have sort of, like, found the sweet spot between the two because they realize that, like, you know, Hank Williams and Joe Strummer are really trying to say the same thing right. at the end of the day. So uh, you have a new album that just came out. Yeah. Could you uh, talk about it? Describe like what the songs are about. Yeah, your opinion. It's a, it's a, it's like a very very loose concept album. I wouldn't even call it a concept album, except that we chose songs that like sort of we're talking about the same stuff. Okay. Uh, it's called California's Burning. It's meant to be sort of a uh, like a. A California punk album in the spirit of like X and uh, you know the Germs and groups like that, uh, you know the Minutemen, Men. Um, you know g- punk groups that took punk and did something sort of slanted with it, like, um, and so in terms of lyrics, it's very much about Bay Area where we're from, how. California is sort of seen as this paradise to a lot of people, and it is, but it's also riddled with a lot of issues, um, and how it's sort of this like melting pot that uh, is sort of like it's sort of like ahead of a lot of the country, but it's also only that way because it's forced to confront a lot of issues before the rest of the country is, just because right, it's so a progressive people, yeah. Exactly. So many different types of people here. Um, musically, or, or production-wise, rather, we uh, the record we did before was a lot, a lot poppier sounding, which is I, I like how it came out, but we wanted to do something a lot more raw sounding, so mm-hmm. we decided to do it to tape, uh, straight to like an eight track, and pretty much everything was done to tape. We had a few backing vocals that we didn't have room for, a okay. few like keyboard things, but the original band was all done straight to tape, and it wow. sounds like it sounds really raw, really. That's awesome. Really, sort of spontaneous. Sometimes a little too raw, but you know, probably next time we'll go a little more produced. You know, I I always like to think of recording as sort of a moving target, like. You know, I, I don't. I don't know. I feel like every time I don't go raw, that it's just I lose the quality of it. I like to record live. I like that yeah. feeling. It's like every time that feeling just hits me, yeah. I know what it's like. Versus like trying to track everybody all at once. It's just like I mean separately. Well, it yeah. just like it kind of like pulls apart well, from like what I'm trying to do. Before, we we tracked live as well. We just uh, just the sounds were a little a little. Crisper, mm-hmm. which wasn't a bad thing. It just was different, you know. For me, every time I've recorded, I've like three months later, I've thought to myself like, "Oh man, I wish we did that differently." Right. And well, that's that that's used, gonna happen that used to bug regardless. Me, but, but to me, that's actually a positive thing. Because right. Because you, you know, you keep growing. growing right? right. You don't. If you if you keep if you say to yourself, "Wow, we really that album's perfect," you know, then then you're messed up because you're just gonna keep. You think you found a formula, right? Right. Yeah. If you think you found a formula, then, then you're fucking that's, up. That's right. the problem, right? So to me, having regrets, you don't dwell on them. You just you use try those to yeah to, to, be to work time, on it, right? right? You know. Yeah. So I'm excited. I uh, I think this record sounds the closest to how we sound in a club, and uh, you know we're a band where it's like. 
we you know, we don't we don't play live shows to promote the album. We made the right. album to promote the live shows, you know. Right. We want people to come, you know, get jiggy. <laughs> get jiggy with it. Yeah. That's actually my only trophy is to make the crowd dance. That's like what I do it for. I've like really like searched of like everything in my inner soul of like why I make music and it's like of course I want the most albums like I could possibly create, you know, with the best musicians. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but what I like <laughs> but what I really do it for is like to make the crowd dance. Like I want to have that human connection. You know if you like if you if the whole crowd yeah. dances then like you have that connection. Oh, oh, totally. I mean, you know, there are a lot of bands I dig that do really like intellectual cerebral stuff but the best ones they find a way to get you moving right i love talking heads david byrne for sure is like he's a super intellectual up here guy super artistic um but he'll tell you like even the weirdest avant-garde talking head stuff it's about getting people moving right it's like rock and roll like yeah it's gone to some incredible brilliant places but you know it's about guitars, bass, and drum making people move their body. That's what it's really about. Anything beyond that is okay, but you can't sacrifice that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like when I did my own personal like soul searching of like what is like what do I do it for? Why do I make music the main part of my existence? And it's like that human connection, and I know that if people are moving, that I'm doing good. Yeah, you know, it's like one of those things. Totally. So if you had to um, if you had to pick like one particular show that you think was like your favorite show you've ever performed, because I've been asked this question before yeah. and I was like, damn, it's like it's really hard. Because I've like performed like forty venues in the Bay even like oh, last yeah. year. What uh, is there any is there anything that's actually stuck out in your mind? It was just well, like that. It was like okay. life changing after you played sure. it. You were just like, wow. This has changed my whole perspective on music. Sure. I'm going to say two. One is like not the answer. The second is the answer. Okay. First, a really special one for me was this joint, uh, Kane's Ballroom in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. And it was special for me because they had these pictures on the walls of all the like country artists who had played there. Like there's Hank Williams and like, you know, Patsy Cline and like Ernest Tubb. All, all these people. It's like, it doesn't really matter because the right people were in this kitchen right now who wanted to engage with the music. That right. would be equally special. Right. But that was a, that was just a really special place. For some, I'm, here's the real answer though. Hmm. My band did a, a tour of the Pacific Northwest in August and we played this place called The Space in uh, Salem, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you why. There were like 20 people there. It wasn't a huge crowd or anything. It was okay. just like, a normal crowd, but we just went off the rails. We're, I mean, I, you know, anyone who plays enough shows knows this feeling. Right. But there's some sets you get to the point where you feel like Superman, right? For where sure. It's like anything I wanted to do, like, it, you know, if I wanted to like take this song into like a funk jam or like anything, you know, like the walls, or you could just like do anything. Right. Like segue into a song that you've never played together as a band or something like that kind of stuff. Right. We were just like, you know, this isn't meant to sound arrogant because this does not happen every night. Right. But the band was just like, untouchable. On fire. We were, right. We were just great. And you know, was it the same or was it a last different uh, drummer? Or? Last drummer, Thomas. Okay. He moved to Germany recently. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. And it, you know, it's a big moment because. When you come to the realization that you're in control of your fate, that's a beautiful thing. And another big misconception I think a lot of musicians have is that the crowd has to bring it to them. It's like, nah. Nah. No. <laughs> you're on stage, it's your yeah, responsibility. That's never been my rule of thumb, for sure. In, in, a, if, in a great show, yes, it's like a cycle of energy. You're like giving it, the audience gives it back, and it's just like this synergistic symbiotic like orb of energy you erase the line between audience and performer right right um but if it's a gig where like the people don't know you it's not packed 
you have to convince them, that's your job. They, you know. I mean, I, f I feel like it's always your job for yeah. sure. Like, no, there's no, never. Yeah. You, you try to never separate that line, no matter what. Like. Totally. Like I, I play every first Friday, and we open up for the burlesque dancers. Uh -huh. No one's there to see our band. Yeah. <laughs> but we got to convince them that they're yeah. there to see our band. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Don't let them. Uh, don't let them go to the bar to get a drink. You know. <laughs> Uh, you had one thing to say to your fans, like the, the people who would aspire to be you. You've done so much at such a young age. I mean, like, it's mind blowing. Yeah, you've played like almost every major stage, just like everything. You're super successful as a musician. What would you say to your fans or anyone who's aspiring to be a musician? Well, I mean, we've already brushed on a lot of it, right? Right. Play every, you can't say no. Right. Not, but here's the thing. If you ever want to be able to say no, then go figure out why that is and change that. Because a lot of people say, like, when you're starting a business or becoming a musician, you can't say no to gigs, right? But I, I take that further. It's like, if you really want to be a musician, you have to eradicate any desire to say no. Um, you know, find... And really, that comes down to the root of doing it because you love the music. So find, you know, discover what music you love creating, and it's never a bad time to do it. It's never a bad place to do it, and there are hardly any bad people to do it with. Although there might be some exceptions <laughs> to that one. There are few bad people to do it with. So we've uh, we've touched base on your family, of how they've been an amazing inspiration. I'm not gonna lie, you uh, you have a girlfriend now. Yeah. And I have not seen you smile more ever. <laughs> that's good. It's pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> that's good. That's a good objective. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. She's, she's. Um, I mean, we all have doubt, and I, I sometimes have doubt about the value of doing music, and she is always there to tell me that it's worth doing, which is super cool. That's amazing. Um, we've also gotten to sing together a bunch, which is really fun. She doesn't love performing in public, so it's usually like at home, you know, just uh, like after drinking coffee, I'll like get the guitar and we'll play songs with each other. Um, awesome. But actually, I don't want to like divulge too much like personal history, but we became, we started dating because, we became friends because. Uh, I wanted someone to sing a harmony with. So we met on a oh, backpacking wow. trip. And then it was right around the time when I was getting into X and Johnny Cash and Gene Carter and people like that. So this female, male, co-lead vocal thing. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh man, like, Johnny Cash, Gene Carter, like that's, it's like, it doesn't get any better than that. So I was like, I need to find someone. So we met backpacking, but we really became friends because we started singing together. And... We were just friends for like, like, almost two years or like a year and a half, and then, then we started dating. But it's all all because of music, really. That's pretty so amazing. It definitely. I remember the first day we met. We were with the group we were backpacking with, and everyone was like talking about, you know, bullshit. And we were like walking around behind them, talking about like Josh Ritter, and the Decemberists, and all these groups that we really love. I was like, okay someone on this trip I can like get down with so uh, awesome yeah and, and you know I always knew there was a connection so I feel really fortunate that it's like become something more for us well thank you so much thank Matt Jaffe for, for being a guest you're fucking amazing thank you very much bang the kitchen too. episode one centerfold issue one All right, and we're live from Calcutta. My brain is working so damn fast I might just blow a fuse. Today could really be my last, I got nothing left to lose. Or maybe I'll short circuit and just go out with a bang. 
But is it even worth it if nobody knows my name? I got a fever, got a fever on the rise Can't you see it glimmer like hot pokers in my eyes? I got a fever, got a fever on the soul Can't you see it glimmer like I'm walking on hot coals? Today I woke up angry Today I woke up mean I read the morning paper And I couldn't help but scream I skimmed across the headlines And I, I saw your name in bold I'm turning off the faucet But I can't regain control I got a fever, got a fever on the rise Can't you see it glimmer Like hard pokers in my eyes I got a fever, got a fever on the soul Can't you see it simmer like I'm walking on hot coals I got a fever I got a fever My brain is working so damn fast I might just blow a fuse A terracotta on me with the terror from a blues the beads of sweat are dripping, twisting like a hurricane They'll surely form a necklace if I cannot break the chain I got a fever, got a fever on the rise Can't you see it glimmer like hot pokers in my eyes? I got a fever, got a fever on the soul can't you see it simmer like I'm walking on hot coals? I got a fever. I got a fever. We're here with Janae Bennett. She's uh, the cover artist for Bang Magazine. She's also the front, the lead woman of uh, Seek the Freak, one of my favorite Bay Area bands. So, uh, what do you have to say behind this uh, red mask? I don't know, what am I? What am I? <laughs> what am I? What am I? Uh, is that who you asked me? Is that the what, what are you? What am I? Mm. How, do you how do you describe your name, Seek the Freak? Okay, so there's a lot of aliases in this one, one human right here. Uh, Seek the Freak is... Um, Long story. <laughs> uh, might need to be explained in a, d a deeper interview, but uh, Seek the Freak was actually a doodle. It was a character I drew, and it was this uh, freak named Seek. And then I uh, started working on a story about that character, and eventually I was starting to play with a bunch of different people, and I needed a name for like what was musically happening and so I just kind of used that name and uh, figured it was pretty uh, pretty con convenient because <laughs> uh, I was going around and seeking freaks I guess and so it has a double meaning in a sense um, one is the story with the illustration and then the other is the actual existence of it in the world um, friends and freaks and and uh, weird freak shows, and yeah, I don't know. It's basically just, uh, uh, it's, it's like an art piece. That's how I look at it. It's like my ongoing spontaneous amoeba that I never gets put in a gallery. It never gets uh, defined completely. Um, just constantly, it's like live art constantly growing till the show's over and when's the show over i don't know when i die maybe mm -hmm. who knows seek the freak could go on till it could go on past me who knows i hope it does actually that would be cool so Super if i ever die <laughs> please continue seek the freak uh just need someone to head honcho it and deal with all this stressful <laughs> uh management and whatnot eventually there'll be a manager and seek the freak that's not me that'd be cool 
uh, that's that's yeah that's what i hope for as a musician i'm like can someone else just manage the rest of them and i just show up that would be pretty nice yeah it's like the art the visual art the music like i'm managing so many different projects i'm so like i wish i could put more time into particular songs or particular pieces of paintings or art pieces of art um, but because I'm doing so many things and I'm trying to be really communal based on it, I'm working with so many different artists and different bands as a painter and then different bands as a band. Or <laughs> it's like a freak, you know, F-R-E-E-K. That is a distinction for Seek the Freak. I think that makes the most sense is uh, people who are amongst the free-minded. Yeah. So when did you first know know that you wanted to dedicate your life to music and art? Uh, I ooh, I don't know. I mean, that's a weird question just because I was I've been doing art obsessively since I was a little kid. So my mom just recently wrote me a letter. What was it for Valentine's Day or something? She said she was pretty impressed, always impressed with uh, me as a baby holding a pencil. Like, I held the pencil in a weird way or something. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I know she she was the first person to teach me watercolors. When I was like three, there's this painting in my house. And it's like these ballerina things, pretty abstract. But, um, <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I have sketchbooks of just me drawing cartoons constantly. I wanted to be a cartoonist. That was my original plan as a kid. And then when I got to middle school and high school and everyone's like, you need to pick a career. And I, I'm like, yeah, I, I have one, you know? Like, right? <laughs> there's not, there's, yeah, I mean, there's not too many people that can say they actually pay their bills or anything off art. Yeah. So. It, it's do it pretty well. Str- it's been a struggle, like, because it, it's on and off. It just, like, somehow there's a flood of people buying stuff, and all of a sudden there's, like, no one buying stuff. And then I'm like, okay, I can't go do this, and I can't go do this because I need to save money. And then, because otherwise, if I get involved in some kind of financial way of making money that isn't art-related, then I lose traction on the collectors or the people that are really interested in my work, I feel like they they think that, I don't know, it almost devalues my work if I start doing know, anything doing, but art. Doing anything but art. I mean, that's I've had a couple people explain to me that they're like super in love with what I do because they know I'm so passionate and so direct about it. But, um, yeah, and I just I do it as therapy. I mean, I've had a lot of head injuries and most people with the amount of uh, brain trauma um just have to be on medication or they have to find some other way to deal with cope with it and i just have to do it like at this point you know it's it's pretty like dire for me to be creating art like all the time um music and art and you know music has expanded so much for me in the past few years before i was pretty secretive about everything musical in my world like recordings everything took a couple good friends to break me out of that um i exposed something to somebody and then they exposed it to other people and i was like what are you doing (laughs) but it ended up working working out in the long run i'm really thankful for that that uh situation that happened there so yeah so uh i want to ask you um i know you've played a lot of venues in your day what did you think of Slab City, my favorite venue, the range? I, How would you describe that to people? Because no, it's really hard to just like it's to bring someone to, to to bring someone to that experience when you've experienced it. I'm trying to think of a very like uh, it's that's hard to describe. Slab City is like when you have a dream about playing a show and then you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy, you know, but it was awesome and crazy at the same time. Uh, yeah, man, that was an experience and I'm glad we kind of went back and did it, tried to do it again because I think the first time was quite, quite a gnarly experience for right. us showing up there. Um, accidents happen you know right but uh yeah 
yeah, this l last time was so cool. I mean, I'm so glad I gathered so many randoms. Like, it was like, get on the bus! And I got, like, you know, Root Jazz taking all these random foreigners out there. And, like, I don't know how he, Michael picked up all these people on the way from Santa Cruz. And then he met us in Orange County. And then we all got on the bus and got another van and, like, packed everyone in and, like, drove everyone out. So I think, like... I knew it was going to be an experience, but even though I didn't really get an, as much of an experience the first time I went there right. to ER visit, <laughs> basically. Uh, but yeah, no, that was like, uh, if I could just, yeah, it's like, it's, uh, it's the Wild West, man. It's like playing a gig in the Wild West, but instead of some cowboys sitting on the bar stools it's a bunch of like really chill freaks like it, honestly that was like a perfect place for seek the freak to play for sure i kind of wish i had more musicians well we had skull that was definitely that was that was definitely the hands down the best show i've ever seen yeah. you perform yeah uh, i've seen you perform was, like 10 times but oh my god yeah, that was that was the best like the most free i've ever seen you on stage that's why I'm asking you, like, you know, to, yeah, no, to describe it, your experience. It felt, like, really, like, chill. Like, no one was judging. Everyone was there because they loved it. And right. that's the stuff I feed off of. Seriously. You know, so, and also playing, like, a, t a telomere set there, like, a solo set was really cool for me because I hadn't, I've been kind of jumping back into that realm since I've been doing so much Seek the Freak stuff, which is always collaborative, always big groups of people getting together um that was a trip you know just like out in the, <laughs> in the desert just uh yeah laid out there with like your heart and soul is spilling all over because that's all songwriting stuff a lot of it, yeah and then secret freak gets into more jammier things these days but um yeah i've been tapping back into my songwriting a lot more lately if you could be any animal what would you be and why No, maybe I'd be like a hybrid. A hybrid. <laughs> a hybrid animal <laughs> of like a wolf Which... or a coyote and, okay. and an owl and a rabbit. Damn, trifecta. And maybe a little <laughs> I do what I want. There, like, a little bit of what? Maybe a little bit of a hummingbird in there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit. It's like five percent. Like something in there. Like, <laughs> gotta be. Gotta be related to that. It's kind of my artistic symbol is the, the hummingbird signature. Right. Really where, did, where did that come from, by the way? Uh, I, I don't... I was trying to remember how... That's actually how Seek got started. Okay. Because it's my signature. Right. Um, turned sideways, and it's like the head of Seek. So if you, like, drew a line and to bo make a bottom of it, it would be the head. But um, I don't know, I think it was just symbolic for my speed and like doing a lot of paintings, like and like the quickness of everything right. and the sporadicness of like, whoop, whoop, like what I, <laughs> what I do. And then just, yeah, heart rate pounding like super fast all the time. <laughs> Adrenaline bird, like, I don't know, something like that. But um, tiny and vicious is the thing. Tiny and vicious? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what made you want to be a part of Bang Magazine? I don't know. I mean, you're doing all these projects. You're getting, you know, paid. Of course, yeah. I like. I came to you and I was like, mm. Yeah, I remember telling you, don't tell anyone I did this. <laughs> uh, but I also, when I'm what was it? Yeah, what was the clincher of um, being like, hey, I will fuck with this dude. Well, didn't we do? Did we do a bang show before the, the, or no, it was like for that. It was for that show. Yeah. For the show. So, um, usually like when I get involved in pro, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. just like all about people doing DIY stuff too. So right. like when I see someone like fully hearted, like it's hard for me to do work, artwork for people who are trying to make it's like a business money or something, or something. yeah like, right I, I, i'm very critical about Me too. Like, involving myself with pe i've gotten like some pretty serious offers with certain companies right. and i just don't do it and my right. dad is like what, what the, the fuck is going on doing? right and i'm like i just can't do it like i'm sorry i don't know um 
I feel the same way. But, uh, yeah, so I knew that you weren't, that wasn't in your mindset. And, like, I remember meeting you at Starry Cloud, drawing this, like, you were, like, one of the first people I met in town here when I moved here. Okay. And uh, I remember you getting all excited about my kitty mic, like, coyote with the kitty mic. Is it in one of these? Which one? <laughs> which one but uh yeah and i remember you being like can i buy that for you and i was like no, 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 no. I don't even sell <laughs> this is a yeah i i saw janae it at the starry plow drawing this and i'm like you are fucking amazing oh my god like i have this idea for this magazine i don't i don't know if you'd be interested yeah. So that's how we actually met, was you drawing that. And I was I, like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> and how I actually came, was deciding to draw that was because I was watching this guy slobber all the <laughs> night. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I gotta go up on that thing soon. It's gross. Just keep a, yeah. a three-inch vicinity. And I was just, you know, usually I doodle by myself at shows or at, like, right. open mics, just... Because I'm kind of slightly antisocial until I'm not antisocial. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah. Yeah, that was. Those are a couple of the little pinpoints of your maybe one of my favorite shows. Maybe. That's cool. Do you um, do you have any like dreams, aspirations as as an artist? Like, do you feel satisfied now, or is there anything that like? you really like shoot for as an artist? Um, dreams. Dreams would be to be a little more organized <laughs> <laughs> so that I have time to do more art. Okay, like, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I was like, organization does not seem like your dream. <laughs> it's just to get I've, uh, to my dream. Like, I've known you for four years, right. and organization doesn't seem like a dream, but I, I could see you could squeeze in more art. Shit just flies out of me, that's all that. <laughs> It's never really uh, time. But um, yeah, that, and I just want to, I want to start hopping countries. I think I'm right. really, uh, I've been doing enough in California and the West Coast that I'm, Hitting, hitting 30 and just like, all right, yeah. I've done it. I know every, I feel like I've got the nooks and crannies figured out over here on this coastline. So that's yeah. I want to do some East Coast, some Canada and some, you know, Europe stuff. Uh, and I'm hoping to get all my art organized so that when I am touring musically, I have a lot of work I can be pushing into different crannies, nooks and crannies in different areas and spreading Spreading cool things to cool people, and maybe to non-cool people. <laughs> and like and change them into cool people. <laughs> uh, them that's that's you know? that's the thing is like I, f I feel like I've done everything I've ever wanted to do here, and like I don't ever want to move from the Bay. Yeah, that's. But true. now that like I've toured yeah. Europe once, I'm like that's all I care about. I'm just right. like, where else am I gonna go? Like, I've hit London, Dublin, oh, Berlin, Amsterdam. Yeah, we need to talk about those things. Right. I'm actually looking into but that's, but that's the only, like, dreams I have yeah. left anymore. It's just, like, just keep touring and just, yeah. like, inspire more people that I haven't connected. Because I feel like right. I'm pretty grounded, like, in the West Coast. Yeah, I, I like splattering paint and sound everywhere. So <laughs> I think I've, like, that was, like, certain areas. Right. Up. Enough. They're like, okay, we know you. And I'm like, oh, it's not that exciting anymore, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, mean, I, I keep like pushing the, the envelope of trying to make it exciting. Like the, the friend who brought the Dr. Seuss bicycle to the last right. show I just did. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's why Seek the Freak is fun for me because it keeps it interesting every time. I get really easily bored with like routine. So uh, That's why like I... I personally, like, I fucking hate to play the same set twice. Right. So, like, when you're training somebody new, I'm just like, oh, God. Yeah. It sucks, but, yeah. yeah. I hate to be in that routine, like, stale vibe of anything. I right. want it always yeah. to change, whether it's, like, three songs. It's, it just, like, makes my right. existence. Just throw in three new songs, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, it doesn't have to always be completely different. 
it's just a, a little bit of something. Not completely different, yeah. just but something to inspire me, you something know? It's like I don't to, want it to be, you know, yeah. Yeah, throw like a little bit of hot sauce in it, you know? It's ch a, ch <laughs> so where did you get this from? This, this thing? Yeah. Oh, this old thing? This old thing? I don't know why I got this old thing. <laughs> Paddle on the screen. Probably. <laughs> tell my mom. Don't tell your mom. <laughs> I'm uh, actually yeah. only interested about telling your mom, so yeah, sorry, I'm gonna let you down. Yeah, I just know I if, like it. If you haven't uh, noticed the last interview with Matt Jaffe, I I only like to dance with his mom. Oh, right. So like I like yeah, to yeah. I like to have that personal connection <laughs> with the people that I interview. <laughs> So, your mom's gonna get a phone call from me saying she found that on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't know where I got this thing, but I love it. It's like my little, my little hideaway. Yeah, I feel like I can hide in it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, don't, don't mind me, my strange grandma details. S so I have to know, you uh, you just drew Matt swimming in a bowl of soup, and I really want to know if this is snot. Wait, what's snot? Uh, so this picture you just drew of Matt's interview, like, is this snot he's swimming in? Uh, or is it my soup that no one's ate yet? That's the beauty of... <laughs> Of not knowing. Of not knowing. And if Bang the soup. If, if, there's, <laughs> if there is something I can do in that illustration, it's to not explain that part so that you can. Um, you can just, yourself, just figure it out. It might be cooler if it's not. Eh, the, un cooler the unknown. If it is. Right. <laughs> All right, let's just who would you it. say? Who would you say your your main inspiration as far as an artist is in the Bay? Do you have anybody who's like really like made you think like, oh my God, like I want to work towards the goal of being that person? Uh, Stanley Mouse, my my buddy, he's like. He's done like cause he's done like Grateful Dead stuff. He's, he's the cla like the. He's the the, the class OG, the OG like, Grateful Dead yeah. artist. Yeah, I, mean, I know you've did, done a lot of shows with him. Yeah, he did like uh, all the Journey album covers. and All, all the Journey album covers too? Yeah, and he wow. did Steve Miller Band, that like white horse. But he, he used to collaborate with his um, his uh, buddy Kelly who did like, you know, one of them would do one part and the other one would do like, maybe it would be like the lettering and the image like kind of separate. So it was like a collaborative thing for them. They did some Grateful Dead albums and... Uh, both of them were in the like film or poster art scene and the what, Avalon and all the other. How did you meet Stanley Moss? <laughs> I met him through uh, a friend who had a lawyer who I was out to lunch with, and that lawyer was going over to Stanley's house. And I didn't even know who he was, like, actually, when he said, Oh, I'm going to Stanley Mouse. The lawyer was like, I'm going to Stanley Mouse's house. He would love your art. Like, you should come over and meet him. And I was like, okay, I don't know. Oh, you know you know his work. You know his work. I was like, I don't know. What are you talking about? And then, you know, we go over there, and then I start seeing all the artwork around the studio, and I'm like, oh, shit. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, so that's originally how I met him. And then I, it was trippy because I, like, went home, and I had a 13th floor elevators poster that I got from someone. Um, a while back, and uh, it had his signature on the bottom. I was like, dude, I even had a piece of his art. I didn't even know who he was, like, this whole time. Like, on your wall? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, like, me. I don't Right. Yeah, you don't know. Me. I know. It's me, like, too, I'm as so well. I'm so bad. Like, I, know. I enjoy the art. I love it. I love the music. I, I'm so bad with, like, naming albums. Right. It's possibly all the, the loose screws up in here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, he's he's, like... He's like one of my best friends, I feel like, and it's interesting, you know, because I'm like, he's in his like mid-70s, and now I'm like just hitting 30, so I'm learning a lot. Uh, every time we hang out, I learn a lot from him, and then it's it's kind of just like, he's such a badass that I'm like, dang, like I hope I'm like cruising around, 
getting people to sign or pay me 50 bucks for my signature <laughs> like on a post-it, you know. Um, right. But no, he's just such a humble person. And that's more of what I'm inspired by is like someone who's been through so much of like the biggest generation of like, I don't know, counterculture and all that. And he has It's so pretty amazing stories. being the OG he's of like Grateful Dead. Made it. Right. Too, and, you know, and it's pretty crazy. Um, being like associated with him because we found each other not through like me obsessing over his art and right like just, just randomly did, just right random. and uh and i think that's why he was like so stoked to hang out with me because i wasn't yeah so anyways yeah it's good it, it's a it's a cool person to be inspired by musically um he's also pretty cool he doesn't show anyone his stuff but it's like super is raw it awesome and, like awesome I'll, I'll sneak you a little peek but uh yeah, um, that, that, I think that's, and then everyone, musically, everyone, all my friends, you guys, like, everyone that's in the Bay, I'm like, I miss this vibe a lot, like, I've been down south a lot lately, so, um, I think it's just people in general who go out and just do this shit, like, all the time, like, right. no, no questions asked. <laughs> Thank you. No. Uh, so if you had anything to say to your fans, any like aspirations, because like you have to realize how hard it is to to be an artist and actually be successful, which does not happen that often. There's a lot of artists I know that fucking sell weed or whatever, you know, yeah. like you you broke apart that to do what you do. Cause you know that it'll be like you're taken away from your art. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who's aspiring to be an artist. <laughs> do it until you're real. I mean, do it always. Uh -huh. There's no untils. Okay. And there's no if, ands, or buts. Always do it. But, um, yeah, it's difficult. You got to make some fun financial decisions. That is what I'm it's coming called to Don't learn. eat. No. <laughs> yeah. It's that, and it's like... You know, you gotta hustle your your energy in a sense. You know, and and more than like coming up with. I mean, everyone has a good strategy. I have some artist friends that are so good at like getting their work out there and right. selling it. And I'm just like, man, I wish I had a little bit of that in me. You know, uh, everything that I've done business wise has just been through luck. Maybe not luck, but just so much passion going into stuff that it right. it attracts people. For sure. But um, I know that it's a hard road and a lot of people don't have, like, you know, a ton of friends to rely on. Like, I crash at everyone's houses when I'm floating around and, like, right. I just have an amazing, like, network of friends and family and stuff that I'm able to do this. Like, mm -hmm. I'm super thankful for that. Um, for sure. But I know it's hard, so I think it's, like, it, it's, if you can do a little bit of art every day... Like, even if you have to work a job or you have to take care of your kid or whatever it is, like... Right, just a just, little bit. Just a Five, little bit a day. ten minutes, yeah, anything, like, right. I mean, just don't forget about it. That's, that's For sure, all it yeah. Is. Just yeah. don't let it die. And if you're, like, trying to be a crazy touring musician, like, welcome to the club of trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna but, happen. But, uh... Yeah, that's that's the tough. That's the that's the like cliff you gotta like climb up at, at that point. Cause you're, like, right, it's, it's a whole different ball it's game. Elite. I it's know. Elite. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I'm ready to like get some bungee cords and like <laughs> I don't know what. I need. But uh, yeah, it's it's always tough, but it's like worth it if you're that into it, you know. And and if you're not an artist necessarily, like your supporter that is just as important so i think the the balance of everything you know it's like not it's a, it's always you know if you can't decide to become a, a full-blown musician or a full-blown artist if you're out there supporting your friends and like showing up to shows right. paying a five dollar cover fee like right. you know i mean i know it's important the, the community keeping alive. the scene alive that's, that's all it is you know and like for me that's all i'm doing this for i think there's like so much hurt and so much pain in the world that there needs to be more art and more just like passionate movement like mm -hmm. even if it's
it's like you're screaming about how much you hate something. <laughs> like you're showing passion and right. you're showing emotion. And I think in an emotionless world, like everything is so flatlined. I feel like that it, it doesn't matter if you're singing happy songs or you're singing sad songs. That sad song could really help someone like understand that they're sad too. And they're like, oh, I feel like good because I understand like this breakup song or this like song about death or like you know and so when I write like I, a lot of my stuff's pretty dim or dark not dim but dark that's and, like uh, cutting yourself you short know, and I hope, <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah and I just hope that you know like I, of course it's not going to make someone happy but it might come that's right. a form of happiness in a sense, you know? For sure. So, I don't know. Like, doing art, just doing it, like, I don't know. Just making every day more creative is probably the smartest way to live because you got to protect your telomeres. And that's a whole other story is how that word came out. It's actually the ends of your Tel- chromosomes. Telomeres. Uh, te- well, it's telomeres. Th- it's telomeres. Yeah, because I don't know. But, but the... My spelling is mirror, like you looking into the mirror. Okay. But the t- scientific term is M E R E, and it's about it's it's the ends of your chromosomes. And so like, if you're stressed out all the time, those things unravel. It's like the end of a shoelace, you know. So everyone has them. You can actually get them tested and see how long your telomeres are, and it can show you like if you have kind of a life expectancy expectancy of short living or like long living long live. Hmm longevity uh they have like jellyfish that have extremely long telomeres that are hundreds of years old and stuff and And that's your solo project's name yeah correct so it's basically like what you can do to protect your telomeres from fraying and like killing like your body starting to degrade and is by being less stressed out oh yeah stress number one killer environment and food and everything factors in disease and whatnot but but that's my project is to help like telomere extension but that's like why it's called telomere you know but it's spelled pretty rad but yeah so that's like my new project new focus um and obviously telomeres in seek the freak but right and then it's also live painting or whatever i'm doing but yeah it's kind of like a concept art piece as well i look at everything i do as like a piece of art I don't really look at it as a band or like a solo artist or something. But. It's pretty amazing. Thanks. Well, thank you so much. Here with Janae Bennett, the cover artist, original, Bang the Bay artist, Bang Magazine, Megan.
da 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to my fucking kitchen. I'm here with Matt Jaffe, Janae Bennett. Love all of you. <laughs>